Good evening, folks. Uh, Gary O'Hanlon, uh, delighted to be the chef that has uh, been given the wonderful task of writing Food for the Souls, a cookbook for Bluebird Care. Uh, I suppose first and foremost, my apologies for uh, not being able to be with you this evening, but uh, thankfully we have come up with a wee dish and uh, again, we wanted you all to get a, a little feel of, of what the book's gonna be like in uh, January, February when it comes by you. I'm just gonna do one little dish from the book. Is, uh, it's a little quesadilla, it's a lovely little dish I would have I would have made and started working with when I was back in Boston many, many years ago. Uh, it's got those sort of Tex-Mex, Mexican type flavors going on and a uh, little bit of spice, really, really simple and generally like that was the whole tone of the, the whole book from start to finish, you know, like there's going to be recipes there for every kind of a level, you know, from just beginners, intermediates or anybody that really, really likes cooking, there's, there's different basically dif difficulty levels. We don't really want to use the word difficulty levels, but as I say, something there, if, if, if you're a dab hand in the kitchen, there'll be something for you, okay? So first thing I'm going to do here, I'm just going to take a, a regular little store-bought flour tortilla, just going to rub a little bit of olive oil on it. You can use rapeseed oil, olive oil, whatever you have at home. And uh, we're going to turn it up the other side. I have a little pan here, a little non-stick pan. Ideal to be using a little non-stick pan on this because the one thing you really want is the whole tortilla. As you'll see, hopefully it'll slide off and hopefully it slides off nice and easy for me as well. So we've got the oil on the underside. We've turned it up now into the dry end. And what I have here now is just a little blend of, of mozzarella, cheddar cheese. And we're going to add a little bit of cumin to that. Again, cumin is one of them spices that generally a little bit goes a long way, you know. But as I say, this dish really, really takes, so on, on a general dish, you wouldn't use that much. So for about 200 grams of cheese there, and this, this will do two, two flour tortillas. So this will easily feed two, even three. If it's, a, if it's a, if somebody like with a small appetite, definitely do three tortillas. And uh, we've added about two teaspoons of the, of the ground cumin to that. So we just move our tortilla out of the way a wee second and cheese. And what I have here then is just basically one breast of chicken that we have cut up, okay? And uh, all you want to do, nick it into small little pieces. Again, you can break it up if you've done a roast on a Sunday or whatever, and then it's a Monday. If you if you have like a whole carcass or, or legs or thighs left over, it'll all work equally the same. And as you can tell here by the little bit of color that's on it, we've uh, had a little bit of spice under this here. Again, just adding a wee bit more depth of flavor into the chicken, okay? So in, into our cheese mixture with that. And I should have a wee knife here somewhere. Yeah, there we go. So now, some fresh coriander. Coriander is one of these herbs that just works fantastically well with chicken. You know, if you don't have coriander, Tarragon's nice, even parsley's okay, you know. But as I say, if you if you if you come on a store that's gonna have that's gonna have parsley or tarragon or anything, they're highly likely it's a very common herb now. And uh so in with that. Nice little mix. As you can see, we're just getting a nice wee blend there. And again, when you're adding the chicken, you're adding the herbs, it's bulking up the dish just nicely, okay? So there we go. Oiled side down, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the cheese, cumin coriander and chicken to the the dry end okay basically thinking about half moon size flicking it over and just pushing down the edges okay and what we'll do with that then straight on give it a few seconds and basically what you want to come over with then is a little plastic spatula or metal spatula whatever you have give it a few seconds and there we go already. As you see, that's just generally, well, the type of heat was in the pan, 25, 30 seconds max. Jazz it up a tiny wee bit. I'm just going to add one tiny little bit of extra oil. Just straight into the oven. Now, you notice there I'm using a pan, a pan like with a metal handle. So it takes, I can put it straight in there. If you don't have, if you're using plastic handles or what have you, just put it on a little tray, stick it in the oven. It's at about 170 and it's going to take a couple of minutes. So while that's, while that's cooking, 
we're going to work with the onion, okay? Now, when it comes to chopping an onion, it's quite simple. There's two rules, really. When it comes to the root, you just want to try and keep the root on. I just snick that a tiny wee bit because we're going to chop it. If you want to slice that onion, go in a little bit further, about two, two millimeters, take it off completely, and that helps the, the, the uh, onion to basically fall apart, okay? So then, going with the natural grain, slicing it down. So we have a half a red onion here. I'm not even going to need it all. A couple of wee snicks. And then take your time. Again, knife scales are just one of these things. Like I suppose at this stage you probably all have plenty of them. You know, take your time, nice and slow. You're not going to get any, any points when you're cutting yourself or going faster. So in the cat, in with the onion. Okay. Back to the coriander then again. So with the remainder of the bunch of coriander. Dropping that in there, plenty of it, lovely herb. Okay, so now the tomato, okay. The key thing with the tomato that you want to be looking for is, is to have it as ripe and as red as possible. It's one thing about this dish, it absolutely is a necessity that you use a ripe tomato, okay. I know growing up back in Donegal, my mum always goes crazy whenever I say this, you know, but she was always all about you know, hard tomatoes and green tomatoes and they slice well and the set and the other. It wasn't until it was years later and I was in the States cooking that I realized nice, bright, vibrant red heirloom tomato, okay? And just pull out the core, like so. Okay, I'll cut these into quarter. And then just very simply, nick out the seeds, okay? All we're gonna want is the, uh, tomato itself and the meaty part. I find that the seeds, the seeds just add a lot of a lot of liquid, a lot of water, dilutes a lot of the flavor from the coriander and the onion, and especially from the olive oil. So we'll get rid of that. Back to it then. Dice it up. You can slice them, dice them, whatever you're comfortable doing. It doesn't really matter. There's no real rules in this, you know. If it's messy, it's fine. You just want to get a nice little blend. The key thing is the seasoning when it comes to the, the salsa. This will be known as the pico de gallo in southern cooking, tomato salsa, whichever you want to call it yourself. And that's us then, just in with your tomato. I'm just going to do one wee dish here tonight. So I mean again, you know, one tomato per person and that gives you a nice little gauge of exactly what you need, okay? Small little bit of ground white pepper. I tend to like to use the ground white pepper. It's got a lovely heat content. And the thing with the thing with black pepper, I find, is whenever you know you come on like a little hard piece or whatever, it adds a little bit of heat to your mouth, kills your kills your palate, and uh, it's difficult to get a proper proper seasoning. And then with the salt, again, if you're not if you have a low salt diet, it's fine. Pass up the salt; it'll be all right. And to finish it off, then some lovely extra virgin olive oil. Now again, the key here is to taste, taste, taste. Okay, as I say, I'm well used to uh, well used to making these things and doing whatever, all right? Now, what I don't have here, actually, is a little bit of lime juice. You can add lime juice to this. You can add lemon juice to this. Really, really gives it that little extra bit of vibrancy, okay? I'm just going to flick over the board here now because we're going to be taking our quesadilla out of the oven in a second, okay? So now, into this, a little bit of mayonnaise. And, you know, if you've got some cherry peppers at home, you can use them. A little bit of cayenne, a little bit of chili powder. Either or will do fine, okay? I just have a little bit of sweet chili sauce here that I had. I'm going to use it up. A little bit of mayonnaise. And again, if you want to keep it healthy, completely skip it. Not necessary, all right? But it does add it does add that extra, extra little bit of bite to the dish. And again, you know, it's giving you that wee bit of extra sauce to, to finish it through. So then, nice little bit of messy presentation. You can flick it around, do what you want, serve it on the side. I just like to have a wee bit like this here. We're going to set the uh, quesadilla on it in a second. And you'll tend to, just to eat it with a knife and fork, then you'll tend to get a little bit of the sweet chili mayonnaise with it. So we'll go back. The quesadilla. Lovely little Christmas on that there now. And I can just see already from the bubbling that the cheese has melted there. And you do need that few few minutes in the in the oven just to get a little bit of 
melt in the cheese. Cheese tends to just take on so much more flavor, you know, whenever it's, it's melting and it's hot. And that's it, cut it into quarters. You can cut it into six, seven pieces if you like, depending on how many people you're feeding. If it's a little pre-starter, if you want to entertain some people that are coming over even before dinner, break those up into small little bits. Absolutely fantastic. And just to finish it off then, a little bit of fresh, lovely pico de gallo. And there you have it, a lovely little dish to take from our upcoming book, Food for the Soul. All right, it's uh, chicken, cumin, coriander, quesadilla, pico de gallo. And uh, again, my apologies for missing the night. I hope you're all enjoying George. And uh, it's been a fantastic experience working with you all. And uh, hopefully we'll catch you on the book tour early next year. All right, guys, take care.